Hello and welcome back. This is problem S digit sum from Atcoda Educational DP contest. The problem states that uh, we need to find the number of integers between 1 and k inclusive and it needs to satisfy the following condition. The condition is that the sum of digits in that number in the base 10 is a multiple of t. So any given number x we find out the sum of digits in it and we take the mod with d it should be zero this is a good number according to the constraint and uh, the limits for k are very large k is given as a string of length 10 raised to up to 10 raised to 4 and d is up to 100 so let's go over the approach so if you have come across this type of problems then you might know that this is a basic use case for digit dynamic programming and the main idea in these types of problem is that you are given certain range l and r and you need to count uh, the numbers or find the sum of some property in this range and this range can be very large so as you can see this numbers themselves are up to length 10 to 5 right and hence they are given as a string they cannot be stored as uh, 64 bit or 128 bit integers they cannot be stored so they are given as strings of length up to 10 to 5 and uh, the example for such problem is that let's say you are given some range l and r and we need to find the count of numbers so we need to count the numbers in l and r with the sum of digits as d this is also input so we need to count the numbers with sum of digits as d suppose l was 1 r was 10 and t was let's say 1 in this case the only solutions would be the number 1 and 1 0 which is 10 so there are two numbers in this range with the sum of digits as 1 right so this would be the solution for that and, and the problem could be that you need to find the numbers only using the digits 1 2 and 3 in the range lnr if lnr was not there then obviously the answer would have been depending on the length of the number that we are constructing suppose it was n then answer would have been 3 raised to n because there are only non-zero numbers and each position can be filled using three choices so there would have been 3 raised to n numbers but since l and r are the constraints for this problem we also need to take into account that so i have also created a dedicated video on this topic so you can check this out to understand this topic in more detail i will clearly go over the main idea that is helpful to solve this problem okay so we need to count the numbers between 1 and k right according to the question that is basically we need to find all the numbers which are less than equals to k suppose k is this large number and uh, let's say we create some choices for the first digit so let me write it down here one two three five and let's say at some point we have created this number and now we need to guess what all values are possible in this position right so as we want that the number x that we are generating should be less than equals to k right this condition needs to be followed at every point and the main idea is to check whether we have taken a smaller element before that position so as you can see in all of these positions 
we have not taken a smaller digit than the digit in the kth decimal representation hence uh, this value the digit at this position should be between 0 to 5 only this is because this will restrict that x is less than equals to k if we put a 6 here then x became greater than k and which is not what we want hence it is only allowed to put or insert the number 0 to 5 in this position right and let's take a look at another example suppose uh, k is again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 this is k and let's say until now at until this point we have created a number like this and we want to guess what all choices are available at this position so as you can see this this position has already taken value at the number that we are constructed which is less than the value that is present in the corresponding index of the decimal representation of k hence this number is already less than equals to k it has already satisfied this property hence it doesn't matter what all values are present in this position hence all the possible digits can be inserted in this position this makes sure that you can insert 0 to 9 and these two are the main observations to solve any type of digit db problems hence it is important to store this as a state because we at each point at each point we will need to know whether we have taken a smaller digit before this position in this case uh, the flag would have been false and at this position the flag would have been true which would have been set in this position only so that is the main idea for dynamic programming in digit digit type of problems so in this type of in this question that we are currently looking at we also need to satisfy some property right this property for that the sum of digits is a multiple of t so we also need to know after we have constructed the entire number what was the sum of the digit and what was the value of that sum of digit with the modular that is given to us in the question hence that also goes in the state of the recursive function that we are going to write and the number will be constructed when we reach at a position which is after the last index of the decimal representation of k so we need to check for the constraint at this look at this state of tp and again we need to know the mod d value for sum of digits for its sum of digits mod d and check whether there is a, it is a good number or not to check we just check whether it is equals to zero it is equal to zero then the uh, we have found out one number good number in the using in having that property hence the mod d value also goes in the state of right these two observations are helpful then now let's move on to the implementation and transitions so the next question is how do we maintain this mod d value suppose uh, we are constructing a number initially we took one then two three and as you know if we are going to insert it digit at this position we are going to insert them based on the conditions that we saw earlier the using the flag and the choices that we have and we let's assume this is m which is sum of digits let's say m is sum of digits of 
previous previously constructed number which is one two three in this case so m would be one two three and let's say suppose we add a digit t here then m would become m plus t and this needs to be stored under a modulo t which is given in this question hence we will store this not necessarily store but pass on uh, to the recursive you call after this so if it was m here then it would have been m plus t modulo d for this position here it was id and if we are looking at the position id plus one then the mod value changes by this amount that is what i have mentioned here so if we are adding a digit new digit then the mod value changes according to this equation so for any number one two three four the sum of digits will be referred by this okay so step one the number only was one then in this case m was one we added a two then m become the previous m let me represent it by the dash came three now okay, m dash is previous plus the digit that we are adding it becomes six now and in this case it becomes 10 so this is the main idea to store sum of digits mod the capital d in the state of the recursive function now let's go with the final implementation uh, we input k and d k is a string since it's a number with length up to 10 to 4 and d is an integer which can take values up to 100 we take input we initialize the tp for memorization let's go over that afterwards let's now focus on what this function returns this will return the count of numbers which are less than equals to k and notice that when i mention it is less than equals to k it also includes zero so it will be this range and since zero is counted always so i'm subtracting this that is that factor uh, according to the question count of numbers less than equals to k uh, with the property that is asked in the question right according to the property we are going to count that numbers so let's go over the function what it does this is when we arrive let's say key was one two one four five seven and the number that we are generating is a it can also contain a leading zero so zero one seven nine and now we have arrived at a position which is the last position of t and now uh, hence we know that we have constructed the entire number which is less than equals to k and here if we check whether the sum of digits mod d so this variable denotes the value or sum of digits mod d that we saw in this slide this is the value that we are storing in the third state of the dp second is a boolean flag to check whether we have taken a smaller digit so in this case it was set to true here only at this position and this is basically the position that we are currently inserting the new digit at this is the standard memorization then we check what is the current digit in the location id in k and based on that we will determine what is the range of digits that can be inserted suppose digit was seven and uh, let's say small taken was false
so in this case the low would be zero and since multicon was false we can only insert the digits in the range zero to digit which is seven in this case so in this case the numbers that we can insert in this position which is id can be taken from this range hence uh, we will iterate over all these digits low to high and uh, because you recall the new construction from index id plus one and update the small taken accordingly whether we uh, put a smaller digit or it is already taken so this is the or condition for that and the mod t changes according to the equation that we saw earlier which was this one and this will basically count all the numbers after uh, reaching a base condition we check whether the sum of digits mod d is zero if it is zero then this should return one meaning that we have found one number in the search range and uh, you can basically increment the count for that and return the answer from here so that's it about this the time complexity for this is basically let's say uh, let's say i denote this as size of k So let's see what the t approach is taking. This can take up to length k memory and time. This is 2 and some mod d can be up to 100. And this for loop can run up to 10 times, considering all the digits are already taken. So this is 2, this is length k the total time complexity let's denote it in terms of the variables that are given in the equation uh, i'm assuming this 2 and this 10 as constant and this will basically give us the time complexity of uh, a length times t. and notice that k length is completely different from k since k can take values in the range 1 to 10 rest to 10 rest to 5 or 4 hence length k can only be up to um, i guess 1 to 10 rest to 4 only so that's why the overall number of operations that can be performed is 10 rest to 4 times 10 rest to 2 for t and it can take up to 10 to 6 operations which is easily solvable in under one second or under the time constraint for solving any computer programming problem so yeah that's it about this do let me know if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding this thank you